Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I am your host, Tommy Maloney, and I apologize, but I am in uh, Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. It's snowing. It's cold. I've got the uh, heat cranked, cranked in this room, trying to just stay warm. So I apologize if you hear the heater, the fan, uh, going. Also, don't forget, pre-sale orders are up right now for my new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. You can go to the link, mydadsadvicebook.com. That's www.mydadsadvicebook.com. Buy plenty of copies. Buy more copies than you'll ever need. I greatly appreciate it. And there's a chance you might receive an autographed copy. There you go. Putting that out there. As I mentioned, I am in uh, Pittsburgh. And it would be nice if there was actually like hockey going on. Because I would love to have gone to see a Penguins game while I'm here. But hey, got that pandemic going on still. But that's okay. Things are getting better. There's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. Super excited sharing this uh, episode of the podcast with you. This is a uh, replay from, um, gosh, uh, this past year. And this past year is almost over. Almost over. This is episode, or this was episode 165, titled Our Happy Divorce with authors. Nikki Di Bartolo, yes, that name, that last name, if you're a football fan, will sound familiar, and her former husband, Ben Helfond, they wrote a book, Our Happy Divorce, and I um, want to just mention how how ending their divorce or ending their marriage brought them closer together. Now, let me let me just put this in perspective. Not only did they end their marriage, but they wrote a book together. They do a podcast together. I don't think I could could do that. Matter of fact, I had to reach out to my former spouse tonight. She was awesome. uh, We were trying to get our son, Connor, signed up for hopefully, hopefully, high school hockey um, in uh, 2021 in January, but I needed information that I didn't have, and she was on, on uh, I don't want to say on the ball, but that's mean, but I want to say she was on it. She was uh, helping me out, so I greatly appreciated that, but I don't see the two of us sitting down, uh, you know, writing a book together. I could be totally wrong, but Nikki and Ben, that's what they've done. They've, uh, uh, on this episode, they talk about how they took their whole family, put them under one roof during uh, the pandemic. Again, I, I don't know. I really don't know if I could do that. Could you? Could you do that? I, you're probably a better person than I am. Anyway, so there we are. We have Nikki and Ben on this replay episode. This is one of the uh, most downloaded episodes of 2020. So that's what I'm going to share with you. So there you go. That's it. That's all I have to say. I am going to try and get warm. And remember, www.mydadsadvicebook.com. The new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m. Pre-sale. It's the holidays. Buy several copies. Maybe you're going to do a... uh, have a, uh, a book group next year. I don't know. But looking forward to getting that physical book in my hands and saying, on to the next book. And I already know what the next book is going to be. All right. As Terry Crews would say, your success is my success. Stay warm, my friends. And remember, stay warm, my friends. 
saying saying good stuff and I, I haven't hit record so now I have to hit record <laughs> because now you're saying funny stuff and um uh, you, so, this one will be funny enough don't worry I about. not I know how does our sound uh on our end sounds great how about on my end sounds good how about um, the voices in my head how do they sound they sound great um but not anything compared it's hard for me to hear your voices because my voice is sort of overrided also they drowned them out yeah not quite frankly I only care about myself. So. <laughs> now I get it. I see why you two are divorced. <laughs> All right, your, your, your earphones okay? Yeah. Headphones? Good. Earphones? Same here. Um, I don't know if you have a, uh, um, a producer, an engineer who, who, who you do post on. No, um, you're, I, I, I'm it. You're it. Okay. Yeah. Because I can record, I've done it for people who, who care about, I'm not, not you don't care because it sounds like you can do it by yourself, but I can record yeah. the audio on my end. Yeah, I, um, yeah. So it's a different channel, but you're good. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I think we sound great, especially I when you, you turn do. off the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the video takes a bandwidth, that's why. It does. Oh, yep. I thought you were just saying because we were ugly or something. No. Just, no. Who would no. say that, Nikki? Who would ever he say would that? He would say that. He <laughs> might say it. Oh. We're really excited to uh, have this opportunity. Thank you for having us on. We love what you guys do. Well, thank you. I I um I, I just want to start off with the two of you because I feel that you represent the the world when it comes to co-parenting and doing co-parenting right. So if I said, you know, if it was uh, a meme, you two would be that meme of what co-parenting should be. And I want you to to represent it as I apologize Hmm. because I've always felt that the way you two have created the positive co-parenting, a lot of us and I'm going to say it's, it's a majority of us look at you as you two are nuts <laughs> <laughs> you because that, right? that is not how you're supposed to co-parent the way you co-parent in divorce is you hate each other. You have to go through years of litigation. Mm. Um, you bad mouth each other in front of your kids. That's how you do it. That's that's right. uh, as the kids would say right now, Ben and Nikki, that's America. That's, that's how you. That's America. America. That, America. That's how you divorce. Sure. Right. Right. And and that's you know that's how my parents divorced. And quite frankly, that's all I knew. Uh, but you know, like we we can get into it. But uh, to us, co-parenting means different things. I mean, and it's it's sort of a buzzword. Um, uh, that that you know either industry people use or, uh, you know, sort of uh, maybe sometimes a sheep in wolf's clothes or no. A yes. wolf and sheep clothes, uh, <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, we are the co-parenting experts, you know, whatever. And, and sometimes it's, we're going to teach you how to get along by not getting along. Yeah. So. Well, let's talk about that, Nikki. How, how, how do you go from not able to sustain a marriage, you know, don't want to be in the same household to, oh my gosh, you two have co-written a book. You are speaking, you're doing, uh, you know, radio interviews, you're doing, you know, talk show interviews. What went right? Hmm. I think taking time and not trying to do it so quickly. And, and really, to be honest, the two of us, when we first started trying to put our relationship back together, our main goal was only to be able to tolerate each other to be in the same room with each other that way. It, we had no idea that we'd come to where we are today. So yeah. That's just me being completely honest about this. I mean, we surpassed every, everything, you know, everything that we would have thought would have been okay for us. Yeah. If you had shown us the meme you were talking about uh, that we were the poster child for 13 years ago, we would have laughed at you. It would have been so far beyond our wildest imaginations. And I think where we went right, and I think where most go wrong um, is at the beginning. Um, and and nobody comes into a divorce or ends a marriage on a winning streak. 
Right. Uh, you know, there, there's some deep rooted emotional, mental, you know, in some cases, physical, you know, damage. Um, and, and, and there's under any circumstances, no decision can, should be made major life decisions, much less decisions should be made in that, in that space. And so what Nikki and I were able to do was on our own through therapy and, you know, some of the other outlets that I had was clean up the wreckage from the past and realize that we can never move forward. And who knows how it's going to look, but we could not, one thing for sure we knew is we could not move forward unless we took accountability and forgave from the beginning. So it, that was the foundation of what we have today. Was that because of what you were just saying, Ben? Was that because the two of you were going through, now was this, when you were going through therapy, was it during the marriage or post? Well, we, we were in uh, couples therapy as I think, you know, the divorce also doesn't just happen. You know, the, the talk of it isn't just one day we're getting divorced and it's over. I think it starts with, you know, most, in most cases, well, in our case, anyways, it started with, okay, we need to go to couples therapy. We, you know, we would split up and then we get back together and it was sort of this rocky road in and out uh, for a while. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I have, uh, Nikki was going to therapy I was going to uh, therapy along with uh, uh, some 12 step program that I'm in. Um, and it was one of those things that just, we both realized that we, we, we had to do not necessarily in the beginning for me uh, that, that I wasn't this spiritual giant that was talking about <laughs> forgiveness and accountability and, you Use know, my lap, sorry, no, but it's true. I mean, I was an angry, resentful, bitter, uh, you know, that person that was going to send this divorce, South because I was making decisions, uh, holier than now decisions that this marriage, Nikki was the villain and Nikki had to be the villain because that, 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 that relieved me of any culpability. Uh, and, and so through a process of, and the crazy thing is in our, in our story is my parents had the exact divorce that I was heading down, even though I had already gone through that and knew, knew what damage it caused to the kids to be in the middle of their parents' divorce. And yet, blind, and that shows you the, the, the power of resentment and anger and, and all these negative feelings that blindly I was going to repeat the same mistakes as my parents. And I and, think for me, sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead, Nikki. Go ahead. I think for me, I came at it the complete opposite way where I come from parents that are still married 52 years later my thing, I came at it as what can I do to fix this? Right. What can I do to fix this problem? Whether it was trying to stay together and then, you know, quickly realizing, you know what, that's not the case. This is not going to work. It would be worse for us to be together than it would be apart. So I sort of tried to sit back a little bit and let him go through whatever it was he needed to go through. I mean, I kind of had an idea what he was going through and how he was trying to take our divorce, but it was easier for me to kind of sit back and just try to see if it played out a different way right. or, and actually pray that it played out a different right. way. And, and the thing is that I, I had this, you know, I call it moment of clarity, but, but for the first time I had hired this lawyer and he wrote up this big like game plan, action plan on how we were going to attack Nikki because that's what I wanted to do. And he was gladly going to be my best friend and partner in crime and, you know, have an annuity for the next two years or however long, uh, you know, fighting this thing. But I, I read this piece of, uh, you know, this, this game plan on a plane and I only read two pages of it. And then all of a sudden it hit me. And all of a sudden for the first time in, in many years, I got real with myself and I was able to see things for what they were. Uh, and, and at that point I landed uh, Monday, I called my lawyer uh, and, and said that I, I wanted to find a different route. Could he send me the balance of my retainer back? And uh, conveniently, I got $175, $200 back out of, out of a, very, a very big retainer. Uh, but the next call was to Nikki. And I said, Nikki, I need some time. You know, obviously, we still have to deal with Asher and, you know, the drop-offs and the, 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 whole, the whole parenting thing. But before we go down this divorce process... I need to work on my, I need some time to work on myself because I'm in no place to make positive uh, outcome decisions. 
Well, I, w- I want to pause right there because as, as you're talking, Ben, it reminds me of when I went through my divorce and, you know, my former spouse, you know, told me on a Sunday, she wanted a divorce. And that next day, that Monday morning, I was on a business trip. And by Wednesday, I already had the divorce papers. And I really wish I had my moment of clarity somewhere between the taxi picking me up Monday morning and landing um, and knowing that the papers were coming because Mm. I signed Mm. them and I really wish I had never signed them because it, it ended up becoming, you know, a battle. Yeah. And, you know, again, like, when you first get married, you think until death do us part and it doesn't work out that way. And so you're not really expecting to, you know, marry divorce. You're expecting to, you know, stay married. But again, I really wish I had that moment of clarity to say, don't sign these papers yet. Take time, you know, seek, you know, uh, an attorney or, or somebody. And I didn't. And, and that's the, uh, you know, where Nikki and I now, you know, as we write this book, um, you know, figured that that I think is the rule. And then obviously, obviously our situation is the exception, but there is a sea change happening. And, and I think there's more, it's, it's more solution oriented, but divorce, unlike maybe a civil trial or a criminal trial or other, you know, uh, things we see in court have to deal with so many emotions and emotions right. when, you br- when you bring emotions into a divorce, which quite frankly is a business dis- d- uh, deal. And I don't mean to sound apathetic about it, but at the end of the day, if you bring any sort of emotion into selling a house, into a business deal, it, it, it's a problem. So, you know, I, I think what happens is people get into the, into the uh, process too quickly. They don't take time. Uh, and, and then they could, you know, like me, and, and this isn't the lawyer's fault because I went out searching for him, but they hire the wrong person. Um, they, they, uh, make decisions based on fear or, or, you know, whatever. And they just don't take the time to heal and the time to work out some of their issues in order to move forward and make this, you know, quote unquote business decision or, uh, you know, see clearly. Um, and so I, I don't, that's where we're really focused on right now is what can we do? Uh, and I hate using this analogy, but it's probably the only thing I remember from college <laughs> in a uh, public health course. But, you know, if I'm sitting at the bottom of a river and I see somebody drowning, I'm going to jump in and save them. And I'm pulling them to shore. And then I see two people and I'm going to come down and I'm going to jump in and save them. And then five. And I can only jump in and save so many. And then 10. And the numbers keep on growing. And eventually, I'm not going to be able to jump and save anybody because I'm going to be too tired. I'm going to kill myself. At some point as a rational human being, I might think to myself, let me go up the river to figure out why all these people are coming down and drowning at the bottom. And I think that, you know, part of the process of this whole co-parenting, this whole great movement that's shifting is we're not dealing with the things that need to be dealt with in the beginning in order to at least send, send a, a set a foundation for a better outcome. That doesn't mean that, you know, even houses with good foundations get wiped out during storms, but it has to be built on a strong foundation. And I'm going to climb off my soapbox right now. <laughs> no, stay up there. It's, it's it, good. Yeah. I mean, that, so that's just where, you, you know, a lot, I hear your story and I hear a lot of other stories and, and, and they're made from, and I almost went down it too, you know, is, is when you're hurt and you're, uh, either you feel slighted or you slighted and she feels like whatever it is. And we don't talk about a lot in the book. So, you know, people who were looking for, you know, what happened, who's the bad guy. There is no bad guy. There's no, the, the, there's no villain in this story. That's why I would never make a great Hollywood script. Right. Um, but all that stuff doesn't matter because we were able to put it behind us. It, it, who did what or who didn't do, uh, did, uh, who did what or who didn't do anything, you know, it, it didn't matter. What mattered was how we were going to move forward and how, we're, how we were going to clean up that wreckage uh, of the past. Nikki, when, when Ben was talking about how he, he called you, 
was was that moment on the phone with him did that feel that it was going to be all right that mm. the even though the two of you are going through a, a divorce that maybe ben is now looking at you know the big picture a, a different way a different angle so when he's question. on the phone with you what's what's going through your mind i think first and foremost i was scared to death <laughs> Why is he calling me? Yeah. Well, yeah, like I didn't. Why is he being I mean, so nice? Like yeah. we would, we talk here and there, but it wasn't always like I mean, every once in a while, but we didn't really talk that much. It was more or less talking about, you know, when each one of us was going to be with our child, when we we're going to drop him off, and you know, because we started this by doing just like the same thing that most couples do is just like the drop off where you barely talk to each other, you don't really want to see each other. So I think when he called me, I was kind of shocked and taken back. Right. But um, I, I kind of could sense in the tone of his voice that it was a different sort of call and a different sort of meeting that that kind of made me a little less afraid. Hopeful. <laughs> a little more hopeful, right. a little less afraid. I mean, don't get me wrong. The whole way driving to Starbucks, I was sweating bullets <laughs> and like scared to death on what this, like where we were going to go from there. But it was, you know, it was something that needed to be done. And, you know, for two very hard headed people for us to actually sit there and look at each other and genuinely put the past in the past and just say, you know what, we don't really care what happened, what we don't care. Because there were so many things that brought us to the place that we were at that moment, that that didn't really matter. What mattered was we genuinely said, you know what, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry meant everything, I think, at that moment to the two of us, considering I don't say it very often. Hmm. But true. We still don't say it very often. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't, but we said it the most important part. The most important part, we right. said it. One of the things um, I really enjoyed is the interview with Asher. And. Oh, I on uh, Hello Divorce or? Yeah, on yeah. Hello Divorce. Aaron did a great job. And one of the things uh, he was talking about, I believe he was three when the two of you were mm -hmm. going through your divorce. And it brings up a, a, an interesting point of telling the kids, telling them that, you know, mommy and daddy are, are no longer going to be living together. Can you two talk about that as far as number one, helping, you know, other families when it comes to having that discussion. And again, in the interview, Asher said he really didn't remember a lot. He remembered the, the boxes, but what, what can we do to help our kids even after the divorce, even mm -hmm. after the separation of going from one house to now two houses? Well, I think for me, I have two Asher stories. So my number one thing that I will tell all parents to discuss with their children, no matter what age they, I mean, as well, I mean, he was three and a half, four years old. Kids are so smart. I mean, beyond smart, that you have to be honest with your children. Like we tried in the beginning, the whole, oh, Ben would leave at night when he'd go to sleep and then come over in the morning before he would wake up for school. Wouldn't you know, this child walks into my room one morning. He looks at me, he looks at the bed and he says, where'd daddy sleep last night? Because he realized at that age that the bed wasn't messed up on both sides. Mm. So for us, we were, you know, we thought we had this whole thing planned and we were doing such a great thing. And, you know, we weren't ready to tell him yet, but Ben was still in the house. He was still there and he would come back in the morning. And this child looked at me and was like, hey, like you're not pulling anything over on me. Busted. Busted. Totally busted. Completely busted. He completely busted. And I was like, you know what? What are we doing? Like, we need to just be honest with ourselves and our child and have this conversation with them. 
Yeah. And, and, and I also think the, and we were part of this uh, thought process that I think is complete. I'll just say BS. Cause I don't know what uh, uh, the swearing. You can drop, you can drop, you can drop F bombs. No, uh, it's, it's complete bullshit uh, that, you know, we tell ourselves that our kids are resilient. I don't know if you've heard that before, but I know that, you know, I've heard it and I've said it as a parent. And they always say, you know what, if it happens when they're young, you they'll get over it. it, whatever. Oh, they do. Yeah, I, and I am a uh, perfect example of that. Uh, you know, my parents were divorced in the... What's the line you used about poison all the time? Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, it becomes a uh, uh, high conflict divorce uh, is like... Uh, Drinking poison and having Hoping, the other per- yeah. exactly. Yes, that's yeah. Favorite line. Exactly. Um, and, and that's what it was like. So, so the idea that they're resilient or they'll get over it, you know, it's, it's truly just just. I look at it as justification for your own behaviors, um, and and trying to tell yourself that your behaviors are okay. Um, but but one thing besides telling Asher, I think we were committed to, was making sure, you know, as crazy as it sounds, that his life didn't skip a beat as much as possible and make it as normal as possible considering the circumstances. So what that looked like was sort of the uh, motto of our happy divorce is what's best for Asher. Like when we made decisions from the very beginning, um, there's a pretty simple equation that we're all taught in school and that's two plus two equals four. Um, and, And when you have three people involved on a decision, there could be three different answers to that equation. But for us, it had to equal four for Asher. If that's from financial to custody, even today, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 in the beginning, there were some answers to that equation. It seemed like a thousand, to me. <laughs> but they clearly equaled four for Asher. So that's the one that we went with. And, and, and again, you know, just like anything else, you can justify, you know, why it should equal four for him. But I think if you really are honest with yourself, or we were honest with ourselves, and we got to that point where we just wanted to make it normal for him uh, and normal in an abnormal, terrible situation. Because at the end of the day, obviously, it's not the kid's choice. They don't understand the intricacies of it, especially at three years old, four years old. I didn't at 12 years old. But, you know, the, the idea is, to tr- that that it, we ended our vows to each other. Um, there was some shame in that. We forgave ourselves for that. But at the end of the day, we tried not to break our vows to Asher as parents. Just because we weren't going to be together, we d- couldn't stop being parents. What's the what's the distance between where the two of you live? Seven houses. So that that is so wonderful because I remember years and years ago I was watching the history channel and they were, they did a thing with uh, 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 Tim Conway and Tim Conway was talking about when he was going through his divorce, that there was a house like down the street and he bought that house because he wanted to be still close to his kids, his, you know, his kids mattered so much. And I, that story so resonated with me when I went through my divorce, I, I did the same thing. I found a town home. It was only a mile away from uh, where my son lived with his mom. And I, 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 I don't know. I, I kid about, you know, looking at life through rose colored glasses and unicorns poop and skittles. <laughs> <laughs> but I really believe again what the two of you are doing is actually re-engineering what co-parenting, what divorce should be, and I think right there living close by each other is so huge because again like you were, you were saying, Ben, the two of you were trying to make Asher's life as normal as possible. It's not going to work out if the, the child is, has one parent in one state and another parent in another state. So I really commend right. you know, the two of you of, of putting Asher in the forefront. 
Right. And, and that's, again, the evolution of our happy divorce that I think it's important that we keep on reemphasizing is we didn't have this coffee shop meeting and go through this pretty, you know, for a bad process, pretty easy uh, considering what most people go through of the divorce to living seven houses apart. Right. I mean, we, I've had three houses, I think, uh, since we've been four, since we've been divorced and, you know, some were across town and some of them. Uh, and then we, I, my wife and I decided we wanted to live on the water. Um, and, and I was away, uh, one weekend and I get a call from Nikki and she said, <laughs> I bought you a lot. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, Nikki, what? I actually bought the lot for us to hold on to as like an investment. Well, that was the fun. I, I, I said, Nikki, what happens if I don't want the lot? Uh, and she said, uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we will do it as investment because that's what we were planning on doing. So we built the house and, and now Asher and my kids for that matter, um, much to this may probably sometimes of Nikki and no, Chad because they're a little overbearing because they're four and seven uh, and they don't understand boundaries that well. But, um, you know, Asher can go between houses. We call it, the, the name of the street we live on is Longfellow and, and we call him the Longfellow Creeper because uh, <laughs> he, he just loves, shows up. he just shows up. I mean, like last night he scared the living hell. I mean, he just, the door opened at 10 o'clock, uh, but he just shows up. And, and, and there, there's also times where, He's, he'll call and say, can I, can I stay at mom's or, you know, even though it's my day or vice versa. And does that two plus two equal four even today for me to hear that? No, but we're still committed today to what's best for Asher. And if he wants to stay with his mom an extra day for whatever reason, then that's okay. We don't count days. You know, we don't uh, go on the calendar and say, well, you had him 17 days last week or last month, I, you know, I, I want them 17 days. It, it works out. It's always worked out. I, uh, I want to, I don't know if, if, if you're open to this advice, but I'm going to give you a little bit of, of advice. Yeah. But it's a different situation. So my son and Asher are around the same age. My son is just a few months older than Asher. And the, the kid is a working machine. He literally works seven days a week. Wow. And unfortunately, because of that, we don't see that see him as often. So I'm going to warn you, if Asher starts working, which is a good thing, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you might you might not see him as much. And, and I, I don't really mean to joke about it, but it was something that, you know, when you're putting your, you know, parenting agreement together, that was something I, I never thought of. Oh my gosh, right. my, my kid's working. Hold on. I'm losing out on weekends. And so yeah. you know, when you're talking about two plus two in that situation, Ben, you know, you, you are losing out, but because of what the two of you created, you get it. There's no bitterness going, like you were saying, we're not counting the days. And, right. and Asher hard. turned 16, uh, you know, I, I think we lost him to not necessarily to, to, to working, but to other friends, because I think even before that, I think once they become a teenager, you go for sort of from their, the, and this is just parenting in general, right? You right. go from being the, the coolest parents ever to knowing <laughs> everything, to wanting to learn, to be, him being a sponge and listening to us, to us absolutely knowing nothing and for all intents and purposes becoming Uber drivers. Right. And, and, and so, you know, we, it's dumb and we don't know anything. Right. So we've had to battle through that as a teenage that, that really, uh, like you said, was never even in consideration that one day, even before he goes to college, that he's going to rather do something else than, you know, lay on the couch and, you know, hang out with us or go on a fishing trip with me or, you know, what, uh, go to LA with Nikki or whatever it is. I mean, it's just at, at some point they become teenagers and, and you're not a cool parent anymore. Right. Totally. Well, for the record, I don't think I ever was, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but we probably weren't either. We probably just thought I we were. totally was cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, She's still in denial. Duh. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I was. No, probably not. Maybe to yeah. other people's children, just not my own. Oh, well, there you go. So technically you were the cool parent. The cool yeah. parent. Like yeah. Izzy thinks I'm cool. Ben's daughter thinks I'm cool, but 
Asher probably Asher probably never did. No, yeah, and Izzy thinks you're cool because you won't. You know, one thing is, they all call her Coco, and 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 they're all. You know, Izzy was the funniest because she, uh, my kids don't quite get it about the divorce, but they see that Asher has two dads and two moms, and Izzy, my daughter, uh, at like four, you know, uh, said, "I want two moms." And we're like, most people don't wish for two moms. Right. And, and, and so I think at the time there, she started calling you her stepmom. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes she still does. Right. And, and, and so, but the other part was Nikki, I think always wanted a daughter too. So she gets sort of get to be, you know, maybe the aunt role is a better mm-hmm. word. The than cool the, aunt. Yeah, I the still cool get aunt. to give her the back. Cool aunt. You get to give yeah, her back. True. You get to spoil the hell out of I her. You don't have to and give her back. Right. You don't have to worry about parenting. You're just, the, you, you get to I be the good to guy. Say yes. Yeah. I want to I want to talk about the the remarriage. Yeah. So with Nadia and Chad, um, what what kind of conversation do you eventually do the four of you sit down and say, you know, especially you know from your point of view, Ben and Nikki, that you know this is how we want to raise Asher. This is how we want to raise our family. Nadia, Chad, welcome to the family. Um, how does that conversation even start? And the follow-up is how do Nadia and Chad get along? I have a really quick, um, little story to interject here before we discuss that. It's another, it's another Asher story where it's about how he, how, how, how smart children are. So when Ben started dating Nadia, and Nadia was spending a lot more time with the two of them. I would always call him at night when he wasn't at my house to say goodnight to him. Mm-hmm. So one night he says to me, Hey mom, do you know Nadia? And I <laughs> said, I have not had a chance to meet Nadia yet. I'm like, I'm sure I will sometime soon. And he said, well, here, I think you need to talk to her. <laughs> and handed the phone to her. Handed her the phone. So that was his way of saying, hey, mom, there's this lady that I'm spending time with. Am I, it's important to my dad. It's important to my dad. And you don't know her, but obviously you should. And, and it's time. almost. Like it's time. He was like, what, what, do, you, what do you say he was? Five? Yeah, he was, half, he, yeah five? he was five. Yeah. And he was like, you know what? It, it's, it's, it's time for you two to know each other because I do. Dad does. Why don't you? Yeah. And, and you know, like I talked about the landmines. Uh, through the field of divorce, even after the divorce, there's some serious landmines. And I think the biggest one is bringing new partners uh, into the equation. Um, and Nikki and I had, had, had created a pretty easy to ride, uh, easier to ride bike because it was just two of us. It was a, two wheels. You now throw four people into it and, and there are four wheels and all of them have to work together. And it was clear from the start um, well, first of all, Nikki and and I knew Chad why we were married. Um, he he was uh, you know around the family, friends of the family, um, and they started you know dating after we got married, and and so that was sort of a test right off the bat about this new what's best for Asher and swallow the ego and you know uh, <laughs> put on your big boy pants, right? Uh, and, and so, um. The story that I knew about Chad, or the story that told me that he is got what we were trying to accomplish, uh, was he called me to uh, ask me to coffee, and same, uh, same coffee shop, same coffee shop, same table outside. Uh, I don't know if we did, I did that on purpose, uh, maybe subliminally or something. <laughs> but um, he uh, asked if it was okay if he married Nikki and became part of this family. Wow. And despite my hardest <laughs> uh, attempts to, you know, tell him why that was a huge mistake for him. Um, it was crazy. You know, he was like, at the end of the day, he was going to do it anyway. Right. But what it showed me in that moment is that he understood what Nikki and I were trying to accomplish. He was going to come in and be a, uh, one of a wheel that works, not a, you know, uh, a, a, a cog in the wheel. Right. Um, and at that point, first of all, there was nothing, even my, uh, most, uh, biggest denial 
in the world couldn't buy any store, any other story that he's a good guy, that he's great for Nikki and thus in turn, great for my son. And, 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 uh, I said, of course. Um, and so, you know, and then with Nadia, one thing that's important that we avoided the landmine of, of the dating thing and the ego is, uh, Nikki had, had asked me, you know, she knew what I was up to and then I was, you know, that, that man that gets divorced and just wants to date anything by the name of Mercedes or diamond. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So I, you know, I, she knew I was going out and sowing whatever, you know, prover, prover, proverbial wild oats. But, but, uh, the, uh, thing is she called me one day and she said, you know what, I, I think it's not a great idea for you to, you know, bring anybody around Asher until you're sure you know, at least that you're sure that there's something more than just, you know, fling or a short-term relationship, that there's a future. And, uh, you know, I have to tell you, my first reaction was, <laughs> who the hell are you to tell me who I can and can't bring around my uh, son? Really? And, that was your first reaction, not shut the f- Right? You know, no, that, that was. Yeah. yeah. That was. Yeah. I mean, right. It was like, who the hell are you? I was yeah. right, though. But, and, you know, when I took back the, you know, and, and had a little restraint of tongue and, and really like had that conversation about me, you know, you, we say it a lot, but what's best for Asher, right? And, right. and that he, she was absolutely right. He's already been damaged about what marriage means and what, you know, the idea of marriage, even though his parents get along, it will never be a kid's choice for their parents to get divorced. Right. And so having a revolving door of women in his dad's life, which then in turn is in his life, is not going to help his image or, you know, his story behind what a relationship is. So she was right. So I told her, yes, I will do that. And it was a year at least before I introduced uh, Asher to Nadia. Did I read, Nikki, didn't Chad ask Asher permission to marry you? He did, because Asher actually was the one that asked me to marry Chad. <laughs> oh, okay. The two of them together, <laughs> I mean, but Asher kind of like, Asher brought me the ring and he said, hey, mom, will you marry Chad? And I was like, I mean, how am I going to say no to that? <laughs> yeah, what a cop out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, 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 the uh, partners that we're with, and we've always kind of struggled on how to explain it because, you know, it kind of sounds apathetic when we say buy-in, but they are as committed to this happy divorce, this thing that we've created as we are. But and I also think we wouldn't have allowed exactly. two people to come in that weren't going to be as committed as we are, that came in. We weren't going to let two people come in like bulldozers trying to make a wreckage of what we were trying to make. Right. And that's, you know, sometimes, and again, another landmine, somebody brings in a person that, you know, causes more damage or, um, you know, more toxicity to already toxic environment. And if I had felt that from Nadia, um, I couldn't walk away from my commitment that, or the consequence that I had made by marrying Nikki and having Asher for somebody else. And so, you know, again, my role as Asher's parent it can never stop, whether it's a new person in his life or, you know, whatever it is. So that's, you know, I think the, the, the introduction of somebody new and, you know, the, the swallowing of the egos that Nikki and I had to do. Because even today, uh, 13 years later, Nick, uh, Nikki and Chad got a place in uh, the Keys to go down for lobster seas, mini lobster seas. And Asher and I, a big thing we like to do is fish together. So when I heard, this was a couple, three years ago, four years ago, they did for the first time, that uh, Chad was taking Asher fishing and, and lobster, uh, mini lobster season. My first reaction was a gut punch. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's still 13 years later. It's, it's still hard and, and, and difficult to just, the first reaction is ego. Like, oh, that's our thing. Like, here's another dude doing our thing. Um, but you know, the time it gets easier and easier to, you know, allow I'm sure Nikki goes through the same thing, right. you know, with Nadia and some of the things that, you know, if Nadia you know, talks to Asher or they'd go do something or just putting him to bed or what, you know, I'm sure that she goes through that same thing too. Well, 
the gut punch for me was when I found out that um, my wife's, my ex-wife's uh, husband was teaching our son how to ride a bike. And I'm oh, like, yeah. that's a oh, dad yeah. thing. I'm yeah. sorry. That's a dad thing. And that's where you have to step aside and go, well, that that's okay. That means he's a good man. It means he is embracing, you know, he doesn't have any kids. So he's embracing, you know, that fatherly role, mm -hmm. but it's still, it still yeah. hurts. Especially like those life moments, right? I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> that, that, yeah, I mean, I could see it, but, but, good, but good on you for, you know, being able to take a step back and realizing that, hey, your kid's going to learn to ride a bike. Um, you know, maybe you, you know, get the, uh, maybe he'll learn faster because I know when I, I try to teach my daughter to ride a bike and the difference between a son and a daughter are completely different, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I get so frustrated. So if somebody else were to do that role, great, you know, do it. And then when they get to learn to ride a bike, you know, once they learn to ride a bike, let's go bike riding. <laughs> so. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, and, and, um, I, I was looking for it and I couldn't find, it, but didn't you two were start, starting to try a, uh, a little hashtag movement about celebrating your, your exes? Yes. Yes. We, uh, we would love everybody's listening. If it, and again, it doesn't have to be marriage. It doesn't have to be, uh, the, uh, it's, it's, it, uh, my ex, my friend. Um, hashtag my ex, my friend. And, and again, it doesn't have to be this ridiculous story of Nick and I, or um, it, 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 the, the, we are trying to, uh, you know, co-parenting, like I, we started off the show, has many different looks, you know, it has many, but, 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 but if you can, you know, have a good enough relationship where you have shielded your kids from your crappy decisions, and your, you know, the consequences of your decisions, then that's a happy divorce, and that's a good co-parenting thing. And, and and so, if that's the case, you know, take a picture of your ex, take it with it together, and you know, would love to see it on social media of of my ex, my friend, because we know through this whole process, and we knew, but when we were writing the book, that we are not the only ones that uh, have a you know a, a good outcome of their divorce, and, and how you know, uh, ending our marriage was probably the best thing for both of Nikki and I personally, um, and, and the growth that happened because of it. And I still get her in my life. Unfortunately, even when he doesn't want me, <laughs> 85% of the time, I'm happy I have her in my life. It's the other 15. Yeah. Um, it, well, the two of you bring up, uh, cause I've seen on, on your Instagram talking about, you know, family dinners. Uh, one of my uh, past guest, Erica England, her and her former husband do what's called family versary, which mm. is the day uh, the two of them got married. And because of that marriage had, you know, created their, their kids. That's and cute. it is, and it's, it's, again, this is why I'm so intrigued by, you know, what Erica England does, what two of you are doing, you know, you really are flipping the script when it comes to the world of divorce and, you know, with our kids and being, I guess, the better way to say it is you're actually being adults about it. Yeah, we, we, we do. I mean, not to toot our own horn, but we do use the expression quite a bit of we put our big boy pants on. Right. And, and, and look, I, I, I don't judge people. Cause I, again, I'm not this angel spiritual giant who left the house in, in the most dramatic, embarrassing way I, I could possibly imagine when I think about it, it makes me cringe, but I took off my ring. I took a picture of Nick and I ripped it up and I put it on the front counter. <laughs> it really was a little dramatic. I mean, it was, it, I would have done. yeah, exactly. So it was a little, so, so I left the house in this, you know, so I understand where it goes. I understand how it can, you know, and then you get, uh, you know, people around you and your team around you who are sort of, you know, let, uh, feeding you, you know, BS that you want to hear. Um, and so I get where that comes from and, and I understand where, uh, th th this can go wrong, but, but at the end of the day, uh, it, it truly is, it, it was about our kids and it has to be. 
these two still have your wedding rings? That is a I do. Good question. You do? I'm surprised he hasn't asked for a bag. Yeah, can I have a bag to pawn it? <laughs> um, would you make it into something? No, I was keeping it fresher. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, you know what? I might. It's crazy how many no, things. No, I did not make it into something else. <laughs> uh, the, I, you know what? I, I probably do um, because because I actually found. I might have yours. I keep everything. I mean, I, I, I found, and Nikki found it too, uh, The when we met for the first time, I gave her my business card and she gave me hers. And I still have, for some reason, have that business card. And I think you still have mine. I do. Um, so, I'm, yeah, we probably still have our wedding rings, um, our friend rings, you know, now. The, you know, the, I think the one thing that Nikki and I did uh, that, that some people do, I don't know if everybody does, but we got uh, the idea of being in love and loving each other completely mixed up. And we went through every red light. Uh, stop sign, train track, red flag, whatever you want to say there is that was put in front of us, uh, even up to the day and immediately following our wedding. Um, we just went right through it. And, 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 you know, that was, you know, where we went wrong and didn't put our big boy pants on, but again, would never change it for the end, uh, you know, end of the world. But, um, you know, we just hope that people through stories uh, like Erica, I think her name was, and ours and other people who are professionals in mediation and collaborative and, you know, uh, divorce coaches, that we can make people realize that there's another way. Like you don't have to damage your kids. You don't have to walk around and, and ultimately then damage yourself because you have to walk around with this toxicity and this issue. I, I was talking to a guy the other day who was divorced around the same time Nikki and I uh, uh, were, and he's been divorced for 11 years, but still has to go to probably have to go to court about three or four times a year uh, to fight motions or whatever it is uh, that his ex, you know, throws upon him. And each motion is like six grand. He has to pay his lawyer. And I said, so, you know, how much do you have into this thing? And he said, and, he, and, he, and he's not a you know, super wealthy guy. And he, said, he, he probably said about $400,000. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. And it's it, crazy. And, and it's just, I mean, crazy. And, and so. It's such a waste of money. It, it is a total waste of money. And, and, and that's money that should go to their kids. And, and you can, you know, but. but it, I mean, that could pay for all their colleges. No question. Right. And, and so there's just another way. And, and, and we truly believe, uh, and this isn't about ego, uh, but we truly believe, and the more that anybody gets to know us, I think the people who know us best are actually the most surprised that we were able to do it. But, um, you know, to class A alphas, um, but, but if we were able to pull this off, uh, there shouldn't really be anybody else's excuse why they can't do it, you know? And, and again, it doesn't have to be as crazy as Nikki and mine or as absurd or living seven houses down or family vacations or like, uh, you know, Eric with her family dinners, which we have too. Uh, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but it just, you know, it's about uh, being happy in life and you can either be happy or you can be miserable. You can either, you know, and screw up your sure kids. Your kids are happy. Right. You can either screw up your kids or you can't. Well, I, again, the way similar situation with you, Ben. I mean, my parents divorced when I was really young. Mm. And I always remember my mom saying to me after I went through my divorce, she said that it took her and my dad about 10 years uh, before the two of them could have a civil conversation. And she kept, you know, reminding me, is that the life you want? And ironically, uh, on July 3rd, my former spouse and I uh, had to meet up uh, downtown Denver because our son was doing his uh, senior pictures down there. And it, it, a, a breakthrough happened. We, we actually talked. We actually just, That's great. It, and she sent me an email later on saying how important that was that we had a, a, a good day where we were together as a family. And, it, it just reminded me again of what divorce should not be. It shouldn't be the ugliness. It should be, you know, 
okay, we, we weren't good married to each other, but we have kids out of this. Let's do what's best for the kids. Let's be conversationalist in front of our kids. Let's not necessarily putting on a, a, a fake front, but right. let's start building something. And so after she sent me that email, I responded back to her saying, it was a great day. And I think this is a growth for both of us. And granted, it, see, it was 2008. So 12 years, it took us 12 years to have a civil conversation. Well, hold on to that win. You know, yeah. I mean, that's what, that, that's what Nikki and, and, and the false front you say, and, and, you know, I will uh, make no bones about it, uh, that Nikki and I in the beginning faked it until we made it. And we did at times put on a false front, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, w- when I would walk off the baseball field after coaching Asher and Asher would run over to Nikki and Chad and hug on Chad. Um, and then I would so slowly, you know, saunter over there uh, and, and give Chad a hug and, and, and say hi and, you know, make Asher feel like, you know, it's all right. And meanwhile, my insides are, you know, tearing each other apart. Right. Uh, I, you, so the, the, the false front for Nikki and I uh, uh, was important because at least we were just going through the motions, right? And we we're just, we say faking until we made it, but, but what, when it was authentic and it was real, like that moment you had with your ex, like that was a win. And we held on to those wins. And then we said, you know what? That wasn't that bad. You know, let's try going on vacation. I remember the first time we went on vacation <laughs> together, it was a complete shit show. And it was terrible. <laughs> it was awful. It was, it, you know, we went to Montana and, and Nadia came and, and, and something happened. I forgot what it was, but it was too early. Like, it, <laughs> I think, you know, Nikki said something like, we're never going to do this again. This was a mistake. And, and, and yet we didn't give up, you know, and, and then yeah, we tried it again. And that one was great. Right. And, and then we just kept on, you know, trying it. And then, but, but then what I guess point is it became more authentic and became more real. And even the ones that, weren't faking were clear compared to the, you know, the ones where we were faking, but we held on to the wins. And, and just like you and your ex, you know, had that win, no matter if it took 12 years or, you know, 20 years or two months, it doesn't matter. That's a win. And it's a mo- that's a step in the right direction. And uh, Bessie and Oreo, they get along together as well. Uh, yeah. No, no, uh, Oreo is Oreo and uh, Beastie. Beastie. Are Beastie. Oh, they're like boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, okay. Beatrice is the hamster. That, uh, isn't that Beatrice the hamster? I don't even know what kind of animal. It's so stupid. Yes, that's a hamster. Yeah, that's a hamster. My daughter. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Beastie and Oreo get along. Uh, the, 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 the dogs get along great. Everybody gets along great. I'm not sure that there's anybody who, uh, you know, doesn't. Nikki's dad. Um, I'm so lucky to have him still in my life. Uh, he called my mom. Uh, I, I was born and raised in San Francisco. My whole family's in San Francisco and, uh, 40, 49ers fan, 40, uh, born yeah. and raised uh, a true 49er fan. I think I freaked out Nikki a little bit when we met because my license plate in California, let, let you have a heart, of course. Right. Um, but it was heart D E M nine R Z. Um, so love them Niners. Ah. <laughs> I should have run that. You should have run that. But, but she, but he called my mom and this was when, you know, who knows which way this was going to go. Right. There was no, uh, this was probably in the beginning when it was going to, it, it, it wasn't looking good for our happy divorce. Um, but he called my mom and said, I want you to know that no matter what happens, I will always look out for Ben and make sure he's okay uh, in Tampa. And so, what a win for me that I, this man that's taught me so much about life and, to, and so much about business and gave me my first chance in business and gave me my startup money to start my first company. And I still get to have him in my life. I mean, there's so many, you know, beautiful benefits to this besides ultimately our son. And I think that's the, that's the selfless nature of life, right? When you put yourself others in front of you and you're doing it for the real reasons, you actually get something in return. And what the gifts that we've gotten, uh, you know, Nikki and my mom didn't have the best relationship to say it mildly. <laughs> uh, but now I think they have a great, you know, relationship, you know, a relationship that's at least built on respect. And there's not this like uh, 
toxicity. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no, there's not the animosity that may have been there before. Yeah, I mean, Nikki goes to LA a couple weeks ago with Asher, um, and she calls my mom, Nikki, and says, "You want to come down to see?" Because you know, my mom's going crazy because she hasn't seen her grandkids in Florida for you know five months because of the COVID thing, and that's what my mom lives for. And Nikki knew that, so she called you know, my mom and said, we're down in LA. If you want to come down, drive down and, and see Asher, I'm sure you would love it. So it, 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 it sort of has sprinkled out through my, now my parents also, I'm, I, I'm not uh, claiming it's because of our relationship. Uh, you can, you can, and, but, but, but I'm not exactly, it might well, it might've helped, but I, but I think that actually they were becoming, because you and I are still married when dad divorced Di- Diane. It's like, so, uh, but my mom and dad now, our best friends. Now, part of me is a little resentful at it. Like, why couldn't you jerks figure this out? You know, <laughs> a long something, time ago, like, yeah. 30 right. something years ago or whatever. But it, whatever. It is what it is. It's still nice now when I go home that I have a Christmas uh, in at 40 <clears throat> something years old uh, that I still recognize how great it is to have my mom and dad together in a room having Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner, whatever it is, whatever, you know, big family. And it, th- there's not this, you know, ugliness and it, and it's great um, to, to, to see. So I want to thank the two of you for your time. I want to thank you again, because I feel that you represent the goodness of divorce and the goodness mm-hmm. of co-parenting. Um, before we talk about how to get the book, uh, my last question to both of you is what has changed in your lives the past 12 months? We'll start with Nikki. Past 12 months. Well, I can tell you it, well, for the past four months, I mean, we have, we we have only quarantined with each other. So we've, I think the past, you know, four months going through this together, we have actually all grown even closer than we were before, which I think it, for a lot of relationships, it's been going the opposite, opposite. direction. Yes. But for us, I think that it's actually made our relationship a lot better. And I think too, it's, you know, we've had to make some really tough, hard decisions with a 16 year old. And we have to be both on the same page with this because, you know, we're trying to protect him because so many 16 year olds don't think it matters to them because they're 16 and you know, oh, the thought was, oh, if they get this virus or whatever, they're gonna be fine. But it's hard to just, you know, when a 16 year old's friends are all allowed to do whatever they wanna do, whenever they wanna do it, even during this time, we've had to stand really stern and like on each other's sides to protect to try to protect all of us the best that we can. And that's diff- that's been a little difficult with the 16 year old. <laughs> yeah, it yes. sure has. Uh, for, for me, um, I, you know, the past 12 months has been a regression uh, for me. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I found myself, you know, talk about the irony of the whole situation, but uh, the other day, uh, Nikki, Nadia and my mom sort of pulled uh, the covers off of Ben and, and I had been slipping into some behaviors that quite frankly, it, what, what, one of the reasons that when I apologized to Nikki about the end of our marriage, uh, I had been going down that same path and I've been getting off the path. Uh, that The other path is what's the unhealthy part. And it, I have a tendency to be reclusive and to go into my hole uh, and to go into my uh, hole and lock the door. Um, and, and, you know, I was staying, I was being avoidant. I was staying at the office, uh, until seven 30 and then showing up, uh, right before the bed, kids were going to bed. Um, so, you know, I think everybody sort of dealt with this COVID thing, their own, they all have their sort of cross to bear. For me, it sort of put miracle grow on my character defects. Um, but you know, I have, I have women in my life who love me who have the courage, uh, you know, to uh, somebody who is probably is not the most approachable um, to, to stand up and to call me out on my own BS. Um, and, and, you know, luckily I was at least willing to hear it uh, and, and hear them. And, and at some point I can no longer, and, and I talk about this in the book with, with, with Nikki, uh, is that I can no longer 
continue to buy my own bullshit um, about justification or working and so, you know, the, the, the COVID thing and I got to get this thing started and, and or whatever I was working on. But, um, you know, the, 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 also the thing about the teenager um, is that it's so funny because he said this the other day that we're known as the Were we strict, strict, mean? Be, strict parents. Uh, we're the strict parents who don't let Asher do anything and very, you know, cause we're protective of them because we take this, you know, thing very seriously. Um, and you know, some of Asher's friends, parents don't, um, and or it seems that way if their kids are allowed to go out and do whatever they want. So just like if we had friends who we didn't feel like, uh, we're being serious about this, then they wouldn't be, you know, in our lives right now, they wouldn't come over. They wouldn't even, you know, uh, even if we're outside social distancing, because, you know, my wife and I have underlying health conditions, uh, Nikki's best friends living with them. Uh, he is a cancer survivor. Um, and, and so, we are a family unit um, who spend a lot of time together. Another joy, which Nikki alluded to, of our happy divorce is we were able to quarantine together because at the beginning, just sort of like everything else in life, Nikki and I talked. We actually communicated on the phone, which, which we, I, I, I hate to go back, but I forgot I wanted to make this point. Was when Nikki and I got divorced, she said, when I called her uh, and said I needed time, uh, there was text messaging back then, but it just it wasn't as, we weren't as reliant on it. Right. And so Nikki and I talked on the phone a lot. And Nikki said something that I wanted to just mention about the tone in my voice. She could hear the tone of my voice. And I think with emails and texts, you know, you can, uh, the, the problem with them sometimes is you add your own tone of yes. how you perceive that person. Um, so Nikki and I get on the phone a lot, even today. Yeah, we text. Usually when we're fighting, we text. Yeah. Uh, and then after the third F you, <laughs> I, the, I, I stop the communication. And then I wait a couple of days uh, in, until she texts me back. And then I know she was sorry. Or, or I'll text her. <laughs> and then, you know, that's sort of code word for I'm sorry or she's sorry or whatever. Um, but, but so in the beginning of the thing, we, we got on the phone, we communicated, we came up with a plan. Uh, and the plan was... Asher was going to go in between houses. Uh, all of us were going to shut it down. Not, you know, and Nikki's husband has, has, is essential, uh, the essential of essentials. He's the Hillsborough Sherry, Sheriff County uh, Sheriff. And so, you know, that was the one thing that uh, was going to be the person going out and, and, you know, obviously having to do his job. But besides that, what, what that enabled us to do, because we live seven houses down, is we were all able to quarantine together and have family dinners and do you know, it can keep life sort of as normal as possible when it was the furthest thing from normal. Uh, so another positive for, our, you know, our happy divorce and for communication in general. How can people get that brilliant book? Uh, anywhere books are sold, I believe. I know for sure amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. Um, they can go to mascot books, which is our publisher, uh, .com. Uh, or you can reach out, look, if you can't afford one or you're going through a hard divorce, just everything at uh, Our Happy Divorce social media. Uh, our website is ourhappydivorce.com. Um, just reach out to us on direct message and we'll get you a book. You know, this was never a uh, money-making opportunity for, for Nikki and I. We just felt it was very important to get the message out there, to give people hope and, and, and in a sea change uh, world that we're so happy to, to, to wake up to after 13 years and, and come into this community of people who are really trying to change, uh, you know, how, how we look at divorce and how, you know, op how there's an opportunity to, to have a good outcome to probably one of the worst things that can happen um, in, in a relationship. Nikki, any parting words? No. Thank you very much for having us. We really appreciated it. Yeah. That, uh, if you can't tell, the dynamic is... Ben talks uh, so much. I mean, <laughs> well, I have a very hard time getting to the point. Yes. You get to the point a lot quicker. It's funny because we did it, uh, uh, I think it was a podcast a couple months ago, and they did it separately. And even within her part, which was 40 minutes... My part was 57 minutes. Of course it was. <laughs> it was just, even when we do it separately, I'm still the blabber mouth. But we really appreciate <laughs> having you on and, 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 you know, whatever it took, congratulations on that, you know. And having us on. 
Yeah, what did I say? A seven year old? <laughs> yeah. I, my dyslexia is. Uh, it's, kicking it's kicking in today. Yeah, it's kicking in today. But, yeah, the, you know, thank you for having us on and uh, congratulations on you know everything you're doing to, to get that message out there. And even in your own personal life, that win with your ex the other day, it's never too late. No, not at all. Well, I, I, I really believe now a lot of the guests I've had on, including the two of you, have really opened up my eyes when it comes to me. And again, you know, you talked a lot about it, Ben, taking the ego out and just, you know, not having the ugliness. You don't need the ugliness. And again, a lot of the guests are really giving me hope that I, I can really have a better relationship with my former spouse that we are at, you know, our son's hockey games or baseball games and we are sitting together. We are sitting there rooting him and the team on, you know, being there with her husband and my wife. And just, I, I firmly believe that you two and, and many others, but you two, are on to something in such a great, powerful, positive way. So I, I really do commend you too. I mean, yeah, you've had ups and downs, but that's what life is all about. Yeah. And I, 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 uh, I mean, that story is just so beautiful. And I did, I, you know, I remember going in the beginning to Asher's baseball games and sitting there and in that moment, you know, when you're sitting together, um, there's a singleness of purpose, right? And that is to watch your son win a hockey game or in our case, a baseball game and, and all the other stuff doesn't really matter. And, and, and so that is where Nikki and I have focused on is that singleness of purpose is, is not to hand our son the emotional bill of our decisions for him to pay when he didn't even order off the menu. He didn't even eat but we're going to make him pay for, you know, our, our consequences. But that moment, I mean, that we, so many times we sat, we all just sat together in the beginning um, and all of a sudden all the other stuff didn't matter. Uh, and then, you know, along, along the lines, things got better. And then it wasn't at hockey game or, or baseball games. It was at school events. And then, you know, like I said, one win after another, and then it accumulated to something beyond our wildest imagination. Well, all the best to two of you. Um, I'm I'm very blessed to have you two on. Um, Susan Guthrie highly recommended me getting in touch with you two. So the best. Um, Susan is the absolute best. She's awesome. We love her so much. We we've just had. Uh, there's some people, you know, and I'm sure you've you just get and you get and that they're along the same paths and for somebody like Susan to, to have us on her podcast and she's read our book twice and uh, she calls us, I think the unicorn of divorces. <laughs> it's uh, true. Uh, yeah, it's but, true. But to, for a person like that, who's been around this, this uh, process for 30 plus years, um, it, m- it means so much to us. And, it, and it's not about, you know, that we're doing right, but, but well, that maybe we can help other people through experience and through relatedness. And that's, that, that's what the whole, you know, the premise of the book is and the reasoning, uh, the rationale behind writing it. So we love Susan. Well, all the best to the two of you, to Chad, to Nadia, to Asher, Isabel, Jackson, the dogs. Beastie. Yeah, Beastie Oreo. and Oreo. Yeah. So, <laughs> Beatrice. Yeah. The whole well, clan. Oh, yeah, so the whole, many animals. You can't forget the hamster. Yeah, yeah. never. Um, again, thank you. You've, well, you've thank really, you. you've really made my day. Oh, that that's, means a lot that, you know, I, I, f- I feel like I need to email my former wife and just say, I hope you're having a great day. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you know, the, the, the other thing is the fact that I know you're trying to wrap this up, but the, the fact that she sent you that email, it, it, there's something that's, you know, there's something to build on, right? Or the, and then now you can be the one who initiates it to say that, right? And and that's that's what we did in just small steps. And sometimes we had to take eight backwards, but right. you know we just kept on moving forward. And you know our our uh, personality uh, wouldn't let us give up. So I, I hope that you and your ex are able to 
you know, turn it around and, and we know it's possible because if we can do it, anybody can. And it's true. You, you just really just put the mindset in. You really just in. Yeah. Um, I, I do have, I'm sorry. I have, I have one question for you, Nikki. Who do I complain to about the firing of Mike Singletary years ago? Is there, <laughs> is there like a complaint box I can send that to? Uh, yeah. Mike Singletary.com. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Ben. Uh, Cause I'm a, I'm a Chicago guy. And That's when, so when funny. he was fired, I, I, I love Mike Singletary. He is just a, a gr- I think he's a great guy. And I was really upset when the 49ers fired him. So, um, so what was that email address again? Uh, I think it's yeah. Mike Singletary.com suggestion okay. box. Okay. Uh, suggestion box. Uh, <laughs> great guy. Uh, great uh, football player, obviously just not the best head coach. Maybe it was too early. You know, I think maybe, it was, yeah. maybe it's just throwing a situation that, you know, a lot of coaches do. And unfortunately, uh, they take it because they're, they want to take it, but it, it's hard once you get hired too early and you sort of have a, a couple stumbles to, to, to get back uh, to that top and get the HC position again. But I, I think he will. Well, look at Bill Belichick when he was with Cleveland. True. True. Yeah. Mike's a great guy. I mean, you hear him just, he, he, he the one thing he, uh, you want out of your coach is a motivator and his mm-hmm. speeches and his, you know, it, it, it's like uh, Nikki's dad. I mean, you hear Nikki's dad talk and, and, you know, I weigh 170 pounds soaking wet with clothes on. Um, but, but if I ever heard him talk, I would want to put on pads and go out there and play. You know, there's oh. just people, people who inspire and, and single right. is definitely one of them. That's how I felt about, uh, being a hockey fan, Herb Brooks. Oh yeah, I, I I would be an old school goalie if Herb Brooks told me you're not uh, you're not going to go wear a mask. Whatever you say, Herb, I, I will do it. Oh, not even the Jason mask. Not even the Jason. I would oh, go old there, school. Go old school. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, again, this <laughs> this has been awesome. And, it really has. Um, uh, anytime you the two of you. Or Nikki, if you want to come on solo, you know, um, <laughs> you two have an Touché. open invite oh, any time. And, and um, I really, I really want um, what, what Asher did. I really want to try to see if I can finagle my son coming on the podcast. My first goal is to get my, is to have my dad on the podcast because somebody recommended uh, you should do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But number two, I really want to have, you know, maybe, maybe I have to do it the way you guys did with Asher and just have it in in written form. But um, it's really. Yeah. And then that's what, you know, and and we're lucky that Asher's willing to do it. And he he has a chapter in the book and he, he wrote it, but, but, uh, to, to tell the message, right. To, 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 to tell the message of what it's like that even though it obviously we said it before, wasn't his choice, but what it's like to, you know, have his parents, uh, go in Africa uh, on a safari together or, you know, and then hear the other side of the stories and, and, and stories that have high conflict divorces and what that causes the people. Cause you know, that's what it's all about. You know, it, it's about your kids and, and, uh, you know, all, not, not screwing them up <laughs> intentionally and a bad divorce will screw up your kids. And that's the, that, that, that's the, the short of it. And, and, and it's an unfortunate, but it, it's just such a toxic uh, environment to live in. Um, so, so yeah, I would encourage the kids to get as many kids talking who are willing uh, to, to talk as long as it doesn't cause any more conflict, you know, which is obviously a fine line to high conflict divorces when kids are talking about how bad they're, uh, you know, parents are divorces. So, um, yeah, Asher's been great. I mean, he's, he, they asked him a question on good morning America. I don't know if he's you've been able to watch it, but, uh, he unf- did great, but unfortunately outshined, uh, Nikki and I on, on our moment on good morning America, <laughs> but they, he was in the crowd and they asked him a question. And here's this, I think he probably 15 at the time. Uh, no, he was 16, but, uh, and just knocked it did so much confidence and, and, uh, well spoken. It was probably one, one. I don't know. It was a very proud moment as a father to to, to see him do that and to hear mm-hmm. him on national TV, like not even be uh, intimidated one bit, and just owned it. 
Oh, good for you two. You've you've uh, obviously done an amazing work with with Asher, and you know I'm sure you're doing amazing work with the other kids as well. Well, we're trying, trying the best we can. Trying. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm just honored that you two came on. Well, we're honored thank to be you asked. So much thank for you. Having-